Welcome back to Earth and Life Science subject. Previously, you have learned that geologic processes cause different hazards such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and landslides. This have caused unimaginable impacts on people and their properties. The Philippines is also a tropical country with only wet and dry seasons. The Philippines has a tropical and maritime climate. Annually, the country is visited by an average of 20 typhoons, 5 to 9 of which are highly destructive. The Philippines is situated in the Pacific Typhoon Belt, thus, the country is highly prone to hydrometeorological hazards. The geographical location of the Philippines does not only make it prone to geological hazards, but also to extreme weather. The area that encircles Earth near the equator where trade winds meet is known as the Intertropical Convergence Zone, or the ITCZ. The convergence of trade winds result in the rising of hot air, which intensifies the movement of winds in this area. The Philippines is in the Northern Hemisphere near the equator, hence, it is affected by the ITCZ. Sometimes, the ITCZ enhances the passing of a typhoon, producing stronger and more devastating winds. That's why our topic for this week is all about hydrometeorological hazards. So when we say hydrometeorological hazards, any process or phenomenon of atmospheric, hydrological, or oceanographic nature that may cause loss of life, injury or health impacts, property damage, impact to livelihood and social services, social and economic disruption, and environmental damage. The United Nations, under the International Decade for Natural Disasters Reduction Program, lists 38 of such hazards. That's why for this week, we will focus only on hazards that often affect our country. So those are tropical cyclones, monsoons, and tornadoes. Okay, so the first one is a tropical cyclone. Tropical cyclones are storm systems characterized by rapidly spiraling storms, low pressure center, and intense strong winds. Typically, they begin over warm tropical waters. They derive their energy from the evaporation of water from the warm ocean surface, which ultimately recondenses into clouds and rain while the moist air rises and cools at the atmosphere. The rotating spiraling winds are a result of the conversion of angular momentum, which is manifested in Earth's rotation on its axis. Air flows inward toward the axis of rotation. The direction of the cyclone depends on its location on Earth. The Northern Hemisphere, where the Philippines is located, would have a counterclockwise direction of cyclones. Cyclones can have increased strength of wind. So when this happens, they can develop into tropical depressions. So as the strength of the wind increases, the tropical depression, 45 to 62 kilometers per hour, develops into a storm, 63 to 117 kilometers per hour, then into a typhoon, 118 to 239 kilometers per hour, and finally into a super typhoon, 240 kilometers per hour or higher. In the western North Pacific around the Philippines, Japan, and China, the storms are known as typhoons, while in the North Atlantic Ocean and the Eastern North Pacific, they are referred as hurricanes. So here are the top five destructive typhoons to ever hit the country. First one is the Typhoon Haiphong, 1881, Typhoon Haiyan, which is, we call it as the Yolanda, 2013, Tropical Storm Thelma, also known as Orin, 1991, Typhoon Bofa, 
also known as Pablo, 2012, and Typhoon Angela, 1867. On the average, the Philippines experiences almost 20 typhoons annually. Pag-asa issues public storm warning signals based on speed, intensity, size of circulation, and direction of winds. Some of the hazards associated with typhoons are the first one is the strong winds. The strength of winds can destroy lightweight structures and uproot plants and trees. Super typhoons can even wipe out an entire community, leaving families homeless. The other one is heavy rainfall leading to flooding. Some typhoons are associated with continuous and heavy rains. The identified primary causes of immediate flooding stem from either clogged drainage or low elevation of affected areas. Flooding can even worsen in places with high density of population and narrow spaces. During rainy season, rainwater may not subside for days if the drainage systems are clogged or there are obstructions in the pathways of water. This can lead to more problems such as disruption of commercial and industrial operations leading to loss of income. Another one, displacement of affected families or damaged properties resulting from corrosion and water intrusion and health diseases including leptospirosis and pathological diseases caused by waterborne agents. Typhoons usually lost their energy when they make landfall. They also weaken when they enter a cooler and drier environment because they come from warm, moist, tropical air. Next one, monsoons, also known as the seasonal winds. In our country, a monsoon is what we call habagat or amihan. Habagat is a pattern of wind that blows from the southwest between May and September and which brings rain, or also known as the wet monsoon. Amihan, on the other hand, blows from the northeast between October and April and is considered the dry monsoon. Okay, so let's differentiate Habagat and Amihan. The Amihan or the Northeast Monsoon is characterized by cold, gusty wind with little or no precipitation. It begins in early September up to May or June. The cool wind is from Northern China and Siberia, gradually moving southward as it reaches the Philippines. Hazard associated with Amihan are thunderstorm, lightning, heavy rainfall, and flooding, all of which may lead to property damage and health risk. Habagat, on the other hand, is characterized by hot and humid atmosphere with frequent heavy rainfall. It begins in June and ends in August or September. In some cases, habagat may bring about problems and hazards during extreme heat and drought. Here, water shortage challenges all sectors of the society, most especially the agricultural industries. Lack of water for irrigation can decrease crop yield. Changes in season are indicated by the reversing winds so Amihan blows to the east while Habaga blows to the west. Next, tornadoes, also known as the violently rotating column of air. A tornado, or locally known as the Ipo-Ipo, is a rapidly swirling condensation funnel whose narrow end comes in contact with the ground. Usually, the violent swirling air column carries debris and other objects that it can pick up from the ground.
tornadoes occur anywhere in the Philippines at an average of 12 to 24 times in a year. So among the immediate hazard of tornadoes are, first one, strong whirling winds. As the winds move toward the center, also known as the centripetal force, the impact breaks objects along its path. Depending on strength, the whirling wind can also pick up objects as, as heavy as vehicles. So from mid-air going down, these objects can smash other objects or hit people as they fall to the ground. Second one, flying debris and dust. Fragments of destroyed objects are hurled away and soil particles scatter around the area, potentially heating or slamming onto a structure or person. And the last one, fire. Tornadoes can destroy power lines and cause fire. At night, sparks seen from a tornado site can mean snapping power lines that have been damaged by the passing tornado. Okay, so those are the different hydrometeorological hazards that often affect our country. So just to repeat, the first one is a tropical cyclone, followed by monsoon, and of course, the tornado, or locally known as the Ipo Ipo. Let's move on to hazard-prone areas. So a composite risk map that considers projected rainfall change, risk to projected temperature increase, risk and risk to typhoons. The combination of all these meteorological hazards has recently caused disasters to the islands of Luzon and Visayas, where most of the risks are concentrated. The pattern of typhoon tracks has been frequenting the eastern portion of the country such that more disaster preparedness efforts are now centered on eastern Visayas. These weather disturbances increase the risk in areas whose topographical features are prone to landslide and flooding. Sadly, most of the rural areas in the Visayas have been exploited of their natural resources, the effects of which are characterized by degradation and instability of land. With this profile, the susceptibility of these areas to hydrometeorological hazard is very high. This will be the last part of our lesson for this week, which is all about prevention and management of hydrometeorological hazards. Hydrometeorological hazards can be predicted more precisely as they follow a cyclic pattern because they are influenced by seasons. They occur at a particular period or season, as compared with other natural hazards that may occur unpredictably. A perfect example is an earthquake. Pag-asa has installed various weather stations all over the country to accurately detect, observe, measure and forecast any of the possible meteorological hazards. It is then important to be aware and be prepared at the onset of the season for specific hazards so that disasters may be minimized if not totally prevented. Okay, so here are the things that you're going to do as soon as Pag-asa issues a warning for any hydrometeorological hazard. First one, check your emergency kit. See if there is food and water supply for at least three days or up to 10 days. First aid kit, cellular phone with fully charged battery, flashlights, and extra batteries, and battery operated transistor radio. The intensity of the hazard may prompt brownouts or blackouts. So most stores or shops may not be open and roadways may be impassable. The second one, make plans for evacuation to higher or safer ground, especially if you live in a coastal area. 
Third one, participate in cleanup activities to clear pathways or rain waters to avoid flooding. Examples of these activities include dredging of canals or creeks and removing dried leaves or debris along water pathways. Fourth one, cut dead or rotting trees and trim tree branches that could otherwise fall off from the force of winds and cause injury or damage. Fifth one, reinforce supports or foundations in your house to withstand strong winds or water. Followed by um, transfer valuables and other furniture to higher ground, especially if your place is flood prone. Next one, secure objects found outside that could be blown away or cause damage to properties or bring harm to people. And the last one, unplug any electronic equipment. Okay, so those are the things that you're going to do as soon as Pag-asa issues a warning for any type of hydrometeorological hazard. Okay, so here are the things that you're going to do during any hydrometeorological hazard. First one, of course, stay indoors. Do not go to isolated or open areas. Second one, stay updated with Pag-asa's official announcements by listening to the news. So if the electricity is out, use battery-operated radios. Another one, stay away from corded devices such as telephones, air conditioners, computers, and lighting features, fixtures. Power surges from lightning can cause serious damage. And the last one, do not go near windows, doors, and porches. Okay, so that ends our lesson for this week. But before I'm going to end the session, I just want to share with you um, a Bible verse. So the Bible verse go, goes this way. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. Genesis chapter 9 verse 11. Natural sciences suggest, in fact, that our planet has gone through a series of extinctions over the billions of years of Earth's existence. Some occurred over time, millions of years, as the climate changed and the Earth evolved. Others happened in moments like the asteroid strike that wiped out the dinosaurs. We may be due for another extinction, sooner than we think, and largely the result of our human greed and negligence. Climate change is real, and one of the effects of it may well be rising sea levels, or what we call a new flood. And God isn't lying. It will not be God's doing but our own, unless we take the necessary steps to reverse the crisis. We've broken the covenant, actually again and again. We need to restore the covenant with the earth and with the God of creation. That's all for this week. Thank you for listening and have a good day ahead.